Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at some of our uh, teenage submissions, Ed. Uh, before we dive into that, I want to bring everybody's attention to our travels in October. October 22nd, you can catch me at Jacksonville's Public Library for their comic and zine festival. And you can catch both of us the end of October, the 28th through the 30th, at Baltimore Comic Con. Really good show for uh, comic books and the birthplace of Cartoonist Kayfabe. So hope to see a lot of you there. Uh, it is Cartoonist Kayfabe-tober, which means drawing prompts for every day. We have this pinned to our Instagram and Twitter. Check that out to uh, dive in and do some drawings based on these prompts. And tag us whenever you share these so that we can spread your talent to uh, all the Cartoonist Kayfabe followers out there. Uh, pretty good stuff so far already. So inspired to continue to see the Cartoonist Kayfabe people come through with that talent. We are working Cartoonist. Best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe? Pick up the books that we make. Ed Piscor's Red Room, Anti-Social Network, and Trigger Warnings are both now available in bookstores and comic shops everywhere. These contain completely self-contained stories as well as a nice clip of back matter. So you want to add these to your shelf and pick them up. Whichever one you find first is the perfect place to dive in because you can read these in any order. Hulk Grand Design, Monster Madness, a retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk. I am writing, drawing, coloring, all that good stuff. These are available in comic shops now while supplies last. And a large oversized treasury edition will be available beginning of 2023. Pre-order that today wherever you buy books. And Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, the Image Comics Street Angel collection back in print after being out of print for almost a year. So just in time for this Christmas season and the perfect gift for any superhero fans in your life. Enough with the filibuster, Jimmy. Man, I feel like you've been holding out on us for about four years. Yes, I've been uh, going through and, and cleaning up my space a bit and came across some of my earliest comics art submissions. So this one is going to feature Deadpool getting a drop on Bishop. Oh, and this is when I was trying to be just the penciler at Marvel. I get so, it. So, you know, you want, a, you want a pencil so they can evaluate you on those skills. It's very tight. <laughs> it's very tight. Hold up, man. One page at a time. One page at a time, dude. Every brick must of the, teen, the teenage... <laughs> a must of the, te the, the teenage uh, cartoonist. The anatomy, like, it's like... You could have got a job at, like, a, a black and white indie. Like, like... They would do it anatomy. Tim Vigil's Coda or something would have that kind of like anatomy. You just, you have all this stuff in the right place. It just isn't like solidified naturally yet. No, and the bummer of this is I don't have a date on this. Yeah. But I'm guessing this is probably about 10th grade is, is, is my estimate for it. Uh, I was trying to figure out like when is Sabretooth part of the team and guessing costumes and things to figure out the time. But I, I think this is early 90s is when I'm drawing it. It absolutely is because. Um, well, at the very least, because this is the Jim Lee. It's about ninety two. You know, like that's introduced in volume two, so ninety one, ninety two is the earliest that could have showed up. You guys at home can see like this is blue line paper. Yeah, the the Ernie Steiner, uh, one of the first cartoonists I really got a chance to talk to about making comics, gave me a stack of this paper, this pre ruled blue line paper. And he told you about tangents right there. I bet <laughs> when, he, when he gave you that uh, critique. So you see, Deadpool gets the drop on Bishop. Sabretooth gets the drop on Deadpool. Very clear Cla storytelling. Classic storytelling, right? And uh, takes down Deadpool. And there's, you can see my anatomy really falling apart on this Deadpool that's, figure in the I background. I mean, that's hard, that's hard to draw, dude. That is sick. You can also see my complete lack of backgrounds. The other piece that I think a lot of uh, a lot of young cartoonists are, are missing in those early days. Listen, it's an open panel, man. So this is, um, I can't figure out how these two fit together like i don't have them numbered either so it's possible this is actually the first page it and is what the first page is uh deadpool getting the drop on bishop there yeah so it's now everybody at home is confused because we've shown these out of order so <laughs> if the story doesn't make sense that's why got the good um sort of the tension in the in the fabric of the costume right there wills would do that this would be another one where if we threw the tracing paper on here there's going to be some some questions but, about where this arm falls. But that's for everybody. And, that's and for a lack from. of a rib cage on this. This dude's like compressed. You know, from 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 the sticks though, like like uh, your pistol grip shotgun could use a little reference. I feel like you might have one just like laying around or something. Should have got into the gun cabinet for the uh, for the shotgun, maybe. Yeah. Totally unclear how his sideburns work. Outside sure. of that, outside of that face gear, but you can see like scrimping on your on your backgrounds is a uh, a big part of this. Sin City must have been out. 
we all did it, man. I don't, I don't think you needed Sin City for that. And I have to assume this is a swipe because I kind of like this pose. And I, I, I don't imagine that anything good on these pages is something that's actually coming <laughs> out of my head at this time. I know what you mean, man. Like, the proportions are Texiera ish Yeah, and that, that probably makes sense. You know, like, Sabretooth being a big character would have been around that time period. Uh, you know, that's how you can guess this time period, too. Like, Bishop with the classic mullet is uh, your first uh, Wills Portatio iteration of Bishop that time period. But... Clearly, the stuff I was reading was those X-Men books, so that's the stuff I'm going to try to do. I think you can also see, like, if this happened to you, I, I don't know, but I would just lose interest. By, like, totally. page three, it's like, man, this I messed this part up, and that Deadpool sucked, and pretty soon I'm checked out. So that's what you get out of the uh, the, the Sabretooth Bishop Deadpool pages. I'm really impressed by the tightness. Uh, like, a lot of kids, they, they it's it would be more sketchy, and if you remember, like, there was, like, a certain school of thought just in, the, like, elementary school where, like, the sketchy line implied, like, professionalism. Like, oh, dude, that's so cool. You go like this instead of just drawing swooping lines. This is very tight. You know what? I don't think I underdrew anything either. So, for good or bad, like, it's probably all drawn on there. That's a mystery of penciling, though, like, is how you get those, a, a clean pencil line. Yeah. Right? You'd see, like, pencil pages whenever you were a kid, and it's like, they look great and tight. Might have been light box. Definitely. Might have been, you know, after working off layouts and stuff. Like, I didn't know anything about layouts at this stage. Uh, Greg Coppola, you know, one of the last great pencilers that, that is penciling comics at, at, at this point, um, he doesn't even use just one pencil. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, he's using different, different hardnesses of gray leads for different things. So, like... I had no they, idea. They have their whole own universe when it comes to, like, pencil and tight and shit. Yeah, I guess if you're a penciler, you know... That, if, if that's really your life and what you're doing 60 hours a week or so... Oh, I shouldn't have all of... Keep my hand covering this stuff up. Right. Um, so this is my extreme talent search submission. Uh, Night Saber, again, you can kind of figure out... I think that was like 93, 94, about whenever they were doing that extreme talent search. Yeah. Yeah, where do we put that, man? Uh, you know what? I'm not sure where that ended up. It might be in the pile... Yeah, so here's your Extreme Studios talent search, and they're looking for everybody. This was such a big deal, right? I mean, it's huge. Weren't you totally into this? I don't think I was seven. Well, I definitely wasn't 17, you know, in 1993, but that wouldn't stop. You know, you had to send in pages. Anyway. Yeah. So that's what I'm going for here, and Night Saber being one of the newer Youngblood characters. And I'm doing it all, man. Pencils and inks. Yeah, that shit is sick as hell, dude. <laughs> dude, it's so bad. I think this is like rollerball pens and... Uh, they don't tell you, you Microns know? and things like that. You gotta figure that stuff out, dude. And, and like, just... I see, you're, like, you're fully adopting, like, the image kind of mark-making, anatomy, double lighting on that piece right there. <laughs> yeah, more successful... Once in a while, than other pla than most of the places, we have like different different inks on the ninjas, right? That are uh, getting getting the drop here. You're figuring stuff out. Uh, we all drew heads that look like that, and that comes from like not really doing underdrawing. You know, like you kind of just basically, you know, you you just go in, and it creates those weird proportions like that. Yeah, and also trying to do this stuff like inside of a space of a panel where it's cropped would even further complicate the ability to, like, oh, yeah, make that head the right proportions and stuff. Like, I just wasn't capable of that at the time. But I think the storytelling holds up, sort of. So you have ninjas surrounding this guy, really bad shadows. Even bad, like, look how clean the alley is. Just a little bit of some, some cans of Coke or something there in the background. This Doesn't is, it look like a, like a can of soda? This is Power Comics, dude. <laughs> Chris, Chris Silver would hire you. <laughs> yeah. Would. Too bad I didn't have his address at the time, right? Yeah, man. So the ninjas make their moves, and of course he knows about the ninja behind him. And you can see Frank Miller's a big influence, right? Like I'm already choreographing my fight scenes, even if the uh, the figure work is a little bit on the lame side. 
but uh, picks up the guy behind him. I could see Ronin in in the, in the forehead piece right there. Yeah, I would have had Ronin being a part of it. And the horizontal lines, one of the more successful, the speed lines. That's one of the best night sabers I've ever seen drawn. <laughs> I'm not even saying that with irony. I think that thing fucking rules, man. Dude, look at how wide his shoulders are. I mean, that's what makes it. He's horrible. like a lanky, lean dude. Because Jay Lee is out. Yeah. And he would be drawing Chapel that way. Yeah, of course. You know, like all the names you pull out right now are all the influences that I would have been looking at at the time. Jim, I love this so You know much, what's man. a little bit different? These corners, that might have been crumb, early looks crumb, like crumb on me. Because I would always look at, like he would do like a spotlight effect around a lot of his panel borders. And I thought that was the coolest thing and didn't really understand it. But it was a way to make something, you know, to, to spotlight something. It's got a hairiness like, like Ronin era Frank Miller too, though. A little bit of your outlaw blood on the sword. Dude, the gesture of this is solid, man. That's probably a swipe. That's a fucking good punch. Like, like you feel that. Like, putting all of his body weight into the dude's jaw. I try to be real consistent with, like, left hand is the sword, so left hand is the sword. That's a Jim yeah, that's Jim Rook. And now uh, these two dudes are coming in, speaking of the sword, and it did switch hands here. He's got that little Playboy model fucking pubic <laughs> hair gimmick, his little bikini line. Like, yeah, that's not even your drawing, that's just a character. Yeah, right. That's I the era, that you gotta part. have the penthouse pet of the month fucking Look change Look at how bad, like... Trying to figure out hatching. We always talk about trying to figure out hatching. Like, that is just 90 degree angles for the hatching under the arm. But you got to see what that looks like. And then maybe you go, okay, that, that, that ain't going to do it. But this is as good as, like, when Jim Lee inks himself on those, on those uh, war journal covers. Yeah, I don't know about that. And uh, that's it for my, my uh, night saber submission ends with him. Just That's hard as fuck, dude. <laughs> Holding him up with his own weight. And, and like, the, the dangling legs... Rob, how did you not fucking put this dude on a backup? I'm sure the only reason I didn't get hired is not 17 at the time. That's true. That, that's probably the only reason, right, Rob? Ooh, this is hard as fuck. And then I, I found, just uh, pulled out a couple of other drawings, because these have to be from that same time period. This feels like I'm ripping off Walt Simonson, where I'm like copying his signature, but it's it's a rock on a landscape. Doesn't that look like his signature? It does, it. but this is hard. Like, like Jim Lee would have hired you if you would have sent that to him. Did you send it to him? No, I didn't send that to him. Like, he would have been like, fuck the rules about pinups and stuff. Like, this is so sick, dude. Look at how much it's like, everything's marker. So if there's a tapered line, it means that you're like drawing two lines to... You did it that way? You didn't just like try to... Nah. Yeah, because it would give, like, just a straight line would be that dull thing right You can there. see, like, that's a sharp. It looks like it. But then when you get into some of this, it must add something else, rollerball pen or something like that. I like that the logo is like a... Is like it, this thing copying? The, the, this is an original piece? Because the lighting, it all feels good, you know? Yeah, you know, it's hard to imagine that this wouldn't have been copied. Like, there's probably elements. Like, that arm is probably an arm that's standard everywhere. So you put that piece on. But if you look, like, this back leg doesn't make sense. No. So, I'm sure some of it's copied and some of it is, is my very bad skills at the time. And it's got to be that same time period. And then I brought this piece because I have a, uh, I didn't bring it. Mullet Superman, that's the era. Yeah, yeah. This this is my submission package for uh, whoever, whoever's going to hire me, uh, because this was just the wraparound cover, and then it was like a mini comic with my submission pages inside and like the intro letter printed on the inside front cover. I have mock-ups of this thing. Like, I could reproduce this. <laughs> it's like a photocopied print run you based know on the mock-ups. Super funny, dude. Super interesting. That, I like the alien thing on the drawing. Oh, you the know background. what? I'm, I'm glad you pointed it out because I wasn't paying. I didn't notice that. But this, that is Jim Rugg. Like, what do you mean that's me? Like that is, dude. Like my face looks like that, or that's what I draw like. Like well, let me find out plain James real quick, dude. Like you will see this that face. Like like that's your eyes and. See now you're exposing me. I actually did this whenever I was 25. Like, <laughs> like the person who drew this drew this. Well, that's true. You could see that. In this face right here, like you would, you would do the body a little differently here. It wouldn't be so boxy, you know. You'd be more elegant with the arms now, but but that is you. Like I see you in that for sure. There's a lot of bad anatomy everywhere. Like you think of how squat these characters are. It, that's a, you, you're not giving yourself an easy task to begin, which which get you points from old Uncle Eddie P. Terrible tangent of my utility knife. Right along Punisher's leg. He likes it, though. <laughs> he likes it when it hurts. <laughs> but, uh, dude, fuck a top-down view, good luck. And, and like, the problem that you have, to some extent, with this is a problem that I have to this day where, like, 
at this view, you're seeing some of the back and some of the front, and you know, all the front. But like, how much of the back do you show? Like, like to this day, it's like I have no fucking clue how you figure. Yeah, you got to look at a toy. Yeah, gotta, right. You, yeah, yeah I look at a Randy Bowen statue or some shit. But I see the influences, man. You were super into Ron Lim, <laughs> uh, Silver Surfer, uh, the regular series. Yes, of Savage Dragon. You could tell because of the sunglasses. I think you're punching a, like like you're like you know what man I could do that hip shit I could do some vertigo stuff because I feel like you weren't about that shit I think you're more about this kind of thing and then you're like if I have to I'll fucking draw Superman with a mullet yeah it must have been Death of Superman era or something that Superman garners uh, he had the mullet for a hot. while he was hot for a little bit whenever he comes back he from, had the from mullet death. yeah he had the mullet for 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 a time dude Bad and, girls. and and I like it because it's everything dude it's like this is Dark Horse. DC, Image, Marvel, and you know what? If I have to, I'll work at Harris. <laughs> I'll do it. The Me bad, and Buzz. The bad girl trend is, is on point there. I'll ink Buzz. So, there you go, man. That's my uh, submission, early 90s submission uh, rounds right Love there. Love it, man. Love it so much, dude. Like, probably around the same exact time frame. Like, you know, I'm fi like five years younger than you, I think, man. Like, so 94... Is still the copy stage. That's a feral from like first X Force, but then like I'm taking those lessons and, into you know ninety five, like I'm like thirteen, twelve, thirteen, and Stephen Platt is out. So I'm seeing like lines, and I'm just is that an original character? character? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his, cool. His name ain't Dutch, but it definitely began with a D, <laughs> and it was like a whole team of dudes. Doesn't that almost look like Q Unit level yeah, of yeah, ability? Yeah. Cute, <laughs> <laughs> and and you can see like pencil and ink, and like I was like stuck in that place where like I would think that I'm gonna be able to do like a whole deal, and then I would just stop because I just couldn't keep the energy up. Right. That I think that's such a big part early on. Like it's hard to just do page after page. Yeah. Because like they turn out not very good. Although I think this is impressive. This is a cool piece of storytelling to me, and that you've got the robot arm. Like, that makes sense. Like, we're assembling this character. This guy's making this other character. But there would be an elbow here, and he's got an elbow already. So he's got some weird-ass arms. Super and, long. And he has a Cordell Stewart jersey, so that dates that piece. Wow. The Cordell, when the Steelers had the little insignia up top, whatever the era that was. But, uh, so I couldn't find my my submission, like, that went for um, the talent search, because I was 93. But I have these two pages that I actually showed Ernie Steiner also. Uh, in 95, and it's Cougar versus Extreme Sacrifice era Link. <laughs> I was so impressed because... Extreme Sacrifice. Because Link gets introduced in Youngblood Zero, and you just see him for one second. He's the Boba Fett that, 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 right. that, that yes. Rob establishes, and he comes back. So it's... He, here's your, and dude, we have the same starting panels, by the way. You have, that, you have the bishop face... <laughs> Gotta have the, the the heavily rendered face close up, and and that's our establishing shots. Like the background doesn't matter. What we're that's establishing, right. Cougar. You're that's establishing right. um, Bishop, and Hand confront. Who's he confronting? Link. The fucking fingernails get a little long, and our boy gets concerned. And that's my idea <laughs> of like a dynamic. Like I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> I'm gonna come at you. Back three quarter view of our guy. That's amazing. The back three quarter view. Look at the background <laughs> of like our trees and shit. And and he and it's a creek. Yes. I'm, I'm just making this out. Look like those little like he's straddling the creek. He is, dude. He's gonna drop a duke right in the middle. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> is that a turtle? It's a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I I bet you I had some swamp things. Yeah, that makes sense. That is the missing ingredient in uh, Team Extreme back in the day. Oh, you know what? I think I think I fucked up, and this is page one also, because <laughs> <laughs> we have our guy creeping up on the floating link. Yeah. Look at this very complex background: spider web, maybe a snake or something wrapped around the tree, and then we have we have the lunge, and our dude getting ready. You know, he 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 smells a rat. Gives him that punch, knocks him backwards, dude. That's awesome. Because this is this is my Deadpool being uh, cracked by saber too. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but the, the back arch, but I was is, just is the move of, of getting hit, just showing taint <laughs> and fucking butt cheeks and shit. 
Man, it took me a I'm long time to, to figure out hatching. Those. Because that's the hatching that I was pointing out as being like, yeah, my hatching doesn't doesn't work. A lot harder than it looks. For sure. Getting hatching to like describe a human body. I, I still remember because like I showed these pages, like you know, I sent them to uh, Extreme and of course got the form letter and all that stuff. I sent maybe four packages to Rob Liefeld from ninety three to uh, ninety five. It took me a long time to make those finished pages, man. Yes. And uh I would take these to the Pittsburgh Comic Con and I remember Pat Olaf seeing this when he was on uh probably still just doing um Tales of Asgard and um Nah, Thunderstrike would have been out. I forget what he was doing. But he he just like real quick, he's like, You're putting a lot of lines down and I could tell you don't know what those lines mean. So he would like show me, you know, like the cylinders and do drapery on top of cylinders and like you gotta understand like light and all that stuff if you're gonna if you're gonna put these kind of lines down because I could just tell that you just you like seeing lines everywhere. That makes you feel like you're doing something accomplished, but you're not there, man. And I, you know, I took that stuff to heart. I took, I, like, took it for serious. This cougar face is really good. That's probably the only salvageable. Like, I, I, I think I could ink that and, and make that something. Whenever you talk about like this is being outlaw comics or whatever, like that's the outlaw element on on that on that artwork. So there it is, dude. The teenage <laughs> submissions full of piss and vinegar and lines Boy, the truth. and muscles. <laughs> A and, lot of lines and stabbing weapons. <laughs> Yeah, the ultra violence of the uh, of the fifteen year olds and motherfucking this stuff. guns, man. Guns and swords. It's a That's good thing stuff. we. It's a good thing we came before some of that crazy shit happened with a bunch of kids because we'd be put on a list. It's very true. <laughs> it is very true. Good to go, Jimmy. I am. K Faber's like follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. It's out there, man. Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness is in stores now. The retelling of the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk and the oversized treasury collection will be out in January. Pre-order that now wherever you buy comics or books. And Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, back in stores after almost a year being out of print, collects eight complete stories in full color from Image Comics. So you can get this one wherever you buy books and uh, it'll be perfect for the upcoming Christmas season. And join me on patreon.com slash jimrug to see a lot more of my comics and art. Download out of print zines and mini comics there and more. Red Room Trigger Warnings and Red Room The Antisocial Network are in stores as we speak. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in the Red Room universe. All the stories within these books are completely self-contained. So if you see one of these books randomly, scoop it up, give it a shot. If you dig it, grab the other one. Uh, thank you guys already who have been supporting these projects. I love seeing these books high on the Amazon list uh, of bestsellers for Fantagraphics right alongside... Carl Barks, Donald Duck, <laughs> Charles Schultz, Peanuts. It's, Same it, audience. It's, it's a contender, dude, and I appreciate uh, the support. All of this material uh, is uh, on my Patreon. Uh, for three bucks, you get the archive, plus some serializing new strips up there every every Tuesday. Uh, it costs you three bucks, man. So go, go to my link tree in the description below this video. You'll be able to get to all those links. Uh, Jimmy, what else do we have out there, man? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, uh, fanny packs, and more at our spread shop. That link is also below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, Jimmy, will be on our way. Make more comics.